So here we're going to look for our input demand curves and they're going to be based off of the cost minimizing combinations of labor and capital. So here we have an ISO quant where the firm is producing 100 units and there's going to be some ISO cost that minimizes cost. And at that tangency we'll label it point A and there's a particular amount of labor. So this is the labor used to produce 100 units of output at a wage rate of W1. Let's have the price of labor now increase from wage 1 to wage 2. This will give us a steeper ISO cost line. Right? The slope of an ISO cost line is the negative of W over R. So if W is getting bigger, our ISO cost line is getting steeper. And it's important to note the total cost of producing 100 units of output at the wage of 1 is not going to be the same as the total cost of producing 100 units of output at the wage of 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little W1 next to this total cost curve. Now I'm going to put on my new ISO cost line and it's going to be tangent somewhere over to the left, the steeper side of my ISO quant. And I've labeled it W comma, I'm sorry, 100 comma W2. Here's the tangency, I'm going to call it point B. And B contains L units of labor and in this case L corresponds to producing 100 units of output bet at a wage rate of 2. Now, I can take this information, this change in wage causing a change in the cost minimizing amount of labor, and I can plot my input demand curve. So, the top graph is the one we just created, and the bottom axis plots the quantity of labor versus the wage. So first I'm going to drop down my quantity of labor associated with bundle A. I'm going to do the same thing with bundle B in a moment. Now, A corresponds to a wage of 1. So I can plot this particular labor-wage combination. I now drop down my labor used for bundle B, and it corresponds to a wage of W2. So that'll be another point. If I kept changing the wage, I'd get different optimal bundles, and if I connected them all, that would be my labor demand. In this case, this would be the labor demand for producing 100 units of output. Let's now see what happens when we keep our original prices, but see if this firm decides to produce more units of output. So here we have an ISO quant where the firm is producing 200 units. And at the original prices, the ISO cost is going to be higher, but parallel to that original one. It'll be parallel to TC100, W1. I'm going to call that TC200. You could also put a comma W1 there if you like. Let's call that tangency bundle C, and bundle C is going to contain a particular amount of labor, corresponding to producing 200 units of output at a wage of W1. can go back to that graph that I was constructing, and I can drop down that quantity of labor, the 200 comma W1. Now this is going to correspond to a wage of W1, so I'm extending that line out. In this case, I've got the labor demand for 200 units of output. So what we see is when the wage changes, we can trace out one labor demand curve. And when the wage stays constant but the firm produces more output, that's going to shift our labor demand curve.